This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for coming and joining us this evening for the learning of Torah Sashem Be'ezah Sashem Izbach. I thank you all for waiting so patiently. Sorry I was delayed. Uh, I hope that the, the shear will be, make up for the wait. Um, we learn with the tefillah that all those that have been touched by the dread machlon, known as Yana Machlon, the related diseases, should have a full shalema b'seq she'achil Yisrael. All of us and our loved ones should always be healthy. We learn with the tefillah that all those that are waiting their shidduch should find their shidduch quickly and easily. Although those that are waiting children should be blessed with zarechay of a healthy mommy, healthy baby. We should have parnasa berevach of a chavid and have langa gezunt azis shalom bayis. We learn the first shleima from my rebbetzin Miriam Liba Bastavara for Chaim Ben Rachel Chai Rachel Bas Nisel that they should have a first shleima b'seich shachel Yisrael. And I'd like to dedicate. Tonight, share to my wife's doctor, Dr. Azriel Hirschfeld, who has helped her and gave her many, many, many hours of dedicated service and uh, does so for many, many wonderful patients. Hashem should guide his hands, that he should give always good advice to help his patients live long, healthy lives, and that he and his family should have only gesund and everything wonderful. Um, there's a famous question at the beginning of the parish of Speak to the Kohanim, the children of Aaron, and say unto them. So, of course, everybody says that's rhetorical. Why does it say speak to say to them? It seems to be superfluous. So the Ben Ishchai gives a very contemporary answer. The Ben Ishchai says of the complex laws that apply to the Kohanim on how to do the... Uh, Avaida, Kmitza, Malika, uh, all the laws of uh, using the Kir and Big Day Kahuna and, and, and the laws of, of, of Yom Kippur and all the uh, complex laws of the Karbonais and, and uh, Zrikis and the uh, Chuta Sikra and, 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 and the different Karbonais, all the different varieties of Menachas and Chakas. He says there's two Alochas that are for all time. The first one is Birchis Kahanim. And the second one is that a male Kayin can't become Tommy Lamesa. He says, says the Ben Ishchai, that's Emor and Amarta. Emor is close of Orchu as Bnei Yisrael, Emor Lahem, and Amor Lahem, and Amarta is the love of where it's, it, it tells us it, the love of, uh, uh, of, of Amarta Lehem, Lenefesh Lo Yitam Abamov. So you have Emor and Amarta. Emor and Amarta are the two places where the Kehanim are Nageya all the time. This, by the way, is consistent with what it says. Uh, is cons- welcome. Is consistent with what it says that we say every day in Kriyashma. We say, Asher uh, Hayoim which I command you today, every day it should be given as if it was given today, as if it's a diyuk no kadasha. There's no expiration day. So you see that there is uh, an example. It says, Emo Vamarta, to uh, refer to today's day and age, where those would be the only halachas of the Complex halachas of kuna; those are the only halachas that are negay in contemporary time. Now, fasten your seat belts because I'm going to start off this year. Basically, uh, usually we don't do this until we get warmed up, but we're going to start this year with a, a very, very uh, powerful story. Hope the Adam doesn't mind. Isha grusha me isha lo yikach. A woman that's divorced from her husband, a Kayin is not allowed to marry. So the story goes as follows. There was a Balchuva by the name of Shmuel Kohn. So with a name like Shmuel Kohn, obviously he's a Kayin. That was married to a wonderful woman and they had a wonderful marriage. They had a wonderful marriage. As Rev Zilberstein 
uh, testifies their marriage uh, had the Shechina Shruya Beinayim. They lived Ish Isha Shalom Beinayim, Shechina Shruya Beinayim. Sadly, they went 11 years and they had no children. Now, they lived in Eretz Yisrael and the two of them, after much deliberation, decided that they would get a divorce so that each one could remarry and maybe each one with a different spouse would be blessed with children. And although it was gut-wrenching because they were very much in love, they got a divorce of Shem Shemayim. To the shock and consternation of Shmuel, two weeks after the divorce, his mother-in-law calls him up and says, you're not going to believe it, your wife is pregnant. Two weeks after they got divorced. Now the great problem is, is that he's a Kayan. A Kayan can't take back a divorcee. Now you must say, Alumdas, it's a get betoyz. He only gave the get because he thought they wouldn't have children. But by a Kayan, even a reach get, even if there's a scent of a get, it bars them from coming back together. Even if it's a reach get. So, of course, imagine the great depression that fell over the couple. So you leave no stone unturned. So he went to Reb Chaim Kanievsky to ask him if there's anything that he could do. Is there any way out? And Reb Chaim Kanievsky told him that it's, it's a tremendous new science. But it says, There's no, there's no recourse. We have to keep the tire. And the tire says, A kind can't marry a divorce. There's nothing to be done. However, he told him, Go to Rebel Yosha. Go to Ladar. Go to Rebel Yosha. So he went to Rebel Yosha. Rebel Yosha listened to him with deep thought, and he said the same thing, I have no Eitzah for you, I, I have no way out for you, but I can give you an Eitzah, I can give you an idea, go to the Kaisel, and cry your heart out, because Shari Demo is in Elam, the gateway of tears are never shut, so the God tells you to go to the Kaisel and cry your heart out, so he went to the Kaisel and he cried his heart out. And he's crying and crying, bitter tears. I mean, here, he loved his wife and now it's going to be pregnant and the child will never know mother and father together. Not because they were, didn't get along. What a tsar! So a man notices that this man is crying uncontrollably. He goes over to him and he says to him, can I be of help? You're, you're crying so terribly, can I be of help? So he says to him the story. So the man tells him, listen, I certainly have no ideas for you. Where do you enter Reb Chaim? To Reb Yoshev, I have no ideas for you. But I, he says, let me tell you something. A man with such a tsar, a man with such grief, at times like this you need a parent. Do you have a parent? At times like this, a person finds solace and support in a parent. Do you have a parent? Now, happened to be this man had an elderly parent in a geriatric home, in a nursing home in America, that he hadn't seen for a while. He was very sick. So he said to himself, Rabbi Yoshev sent me to the Kaisel, and I meet this strange man, and he gives me advice that I should see my father. It can't be a coincidence. He buys a ticket. And he goes to see his father. He was, that wasn't in his plans, but he buys a ticket to go see his father. He gets to the nursing home, and they tell him in the nursing home that it's very likely that his father, he's been weaving in and out of consciousness. It's very possible his father won't even recognize him. He goes in, and his father is up. So he starts crying to his father, and he tells him the story. So the father starts crying. He says, Daddy, why are you crying? He 
says, you know, son, my days are numbered, and I wasn't going to tell you. Your parents were in a car accident when you were very little. And we adopted you as a baby. And mommy never wanted to tell you. And we decided never to tell you. Nobody knows. It's happened so long ago. But I have to tell you, you're not a kind. You're not a kind. Now it's a happy ending. Shortly thereafter, the father died. Closed his eyes and he died. Now it's a happy ending. But the lesson over here is a very important one. And that is that if a person has a problem, Yelech Eitzel Chacham. Go to a sage. A sage sees things differently. Even Reb Chaim gave an Eitzel to go to Rabbi Yashim. Rabbi Yashim could have just gave him chizik and told him, listen, Hashem has other plans for you. He told him to invest in Tvila. And the rest, who knows? Said Hashem Liyareya. But it's a tremendous lesson. Go to Chachamim. Chachamim see things differently. So I want to I want to share with you another story to show you how sages see things differently. The wisdom of a Chacham. This week's parish, it says, Sheish is Yom and Teasa Balacha. Over Yom Ashvi, Shabbat Shabbat. Six days you should do work. The seventh day is the Shabbat day. In Shukhanach, Simul Amad Aleph, it paskins that on Shabbat and Yom Tov, you're not allowed to wear tefillin. Why aren't you allowed to wear tefillin? Because Shabbos is an ice. And to wear tefillin an artificial ice when Shabbos itself is an ice would be an insult to Shabbos. So you don't wear tefillin on Shabbos because what do you need an ice if Shabbos itself is an ice? So by wearing tefillin you are downplaying that Shabbos is an ice itself. The sign, I see by Neo by Neicha. So you have to hear this story. When the Tsar, Franz Josef of Austria, used to go and visit the towns in his realm. So he made a celebrated visit to Krakow. So on his visit to Krakow, The uh, anti-Semites was announced that the next morning he's going to visit the Beis HaKnesses HaGodol in Krakow. The big shul in Krakow. So the anti-Semites went out and they removed the picture of the Tsar from the Ulam, from the hallway of the Beis HaKnesses HaGodol. And it was a huge picture. It took hours to, to... to drill it off and take it off, and it was a, uh, it was clear that something was removed. There was a gaping hole in the hallway, and they circle circulated that, knowing that the czar was coming, they removed this picture to insult him. So the mes- message got to the czar. The czar wasn't born yesterday. He knew he knew that you know there could be troublemakers. So it happens to be that that the the Rab Shimon Seifer was also on the the governmental board, whatever it was called, the Senate or the Parliamentary Board or the Sejem, whatever it was called, of uh, Austria. So Franz Josef summoned Rav Seifer. And says, you're the rub of Krakow, is it true they took off my picture right before I was coming? So Rav Shimon Seifer didn't know anything. He paled for a moment. Inwardly paled. But you see the chachma of the Gadol B'Yisrael. The Gadol told him, 
Let me tell you why they did it. He says, you see, we wear tefillin every day. But when Shabbos comes, Hashem is present on Shabbos. We go out and we greet Him. L'chad odi, come my friend. L'kras kala, my friend is Hashem. Come my friend, let's greet the kala. We, we, there's a presence of Hashem. When there's a presence of Hashem, we don't put on tefillin because it makes us like we're snubbing Hashem. We have to remind Him. Why do we have to be reminded of Him when He's right there? He said, it's the same thing. If the Tsar is coming, if the Tsar himself is coming, why should we have a silent picture on the wall? We have the Tsar himself. To have a silent picture on the wall would be a bazillion. So since the Tsar himself was coming, we took it off the wall. That's the way, that's the way a sage looks at a situation. The Ene Ha'eda. The eyes of the Ada see things differently. That's Das Taira. They say a story with Reb Zalmul of Mavalajan, speaking about Isha Grusha, Isha Lo Yikahu. A man came into the Velazhin, or Isha Reb Zalmul is the uh, brother of Reb Chaim Velazhin, he was a big, big guy. They say over, a man came in, into the yeshiva, and said he's a Kayan, is he allowed to take a Grusha? So the Bochum heard it, and they, they yelled at him, and they said, of course not, and they chased him out of the yeshiva. Rabbi Zalmula came back, and he heard about it, and he got very distraught. And he said, you go find that Balagola, and you bring him back. And they went, and they looked for him, and they found him, they brought him back. He said, what was your question? He says, am I allowed to take a grusha? So he said to him, for how far? He said, no, no, only about nine miles. Uh, yeah, you could take it. And the Bachim looked, and they didn't know what was going on. And he said to them, apologize to this man. You embarrassed him. He says, you think a Yid would come into yeshiva and ask if he could take a grusha? If he was an Amoritz, then he wouldn't know if he could or he wouldn't ask such a question. He wouldn't know. And if he's amazed, you think he would come into yeshiva to ask? He said, this is an Ehrlich man. He's a wagon driver. What do you think if he could take a grusha? I understood it meant if he's allowed to take, him for, take her for a ride. We have to worry because he's alone with a grusha. That's why I asked him for how long. He said, only for three parts. That's allowed. You have, to, you, have to, you have to use your head. When you hear a question, you have to know what the question is. That way people jump to the wrong conclusions. You want to talk about the pictures of Chachma Yisrael. Listen to this. It says in the parsha. It says in the parsha. Kol ish, asher boy mum. Any man that in him is a blemish, lo yigosh lahakriv es ish Hashem. He shouldn't go nigh to offer up ish Hashem mum boy. There's a blemish in him. So this is the law. That a coin that has a blemish, one of the blemishes it says in the parish is a charum. Somebody has a sunken nose. By the way, charum is a lotion of cherim. Because since the nose is the predominant feature of the face, somebody has a sunken nose, it's like he has a destroyed face. A cherim, it's a destroyed face. So if somebody has a sunken nose, he can't do the avaida. Mumbai, boy mum. Asks the clay yakar. So how come in another Pasuk it uses a different tense? In another Pasuk it says Ish mizaracha asher yiyeh boy mum that he will have a mum. Mum boy, boy mum makes sense. He has a blemish. What do you mean asher yiyeh boy mum? That will have it in the future. How do you know if he's going to have it in the future? What do you mean asher yiyeh boy mum? What does that mean? Listen to this Klayoka. It's astounding, Klayoker. The Klayoker said the Chachmei Chazal were able to look at a person, see their Averis, and know that they would get a certain blemish. For example, the Klayoker says they saw a person who took bribery, 
and knew that they would become blind. They saw a person that had a regal gaiva, an arrogant spirit, and knew that they would break a leg. That's what the Kalyaka says. Because the outward blemish comes from an inner blemish. And by the way, that's why they say that the gematria hanister is the same as the gematria nigla of the word mum. Mum is mem vav mem. So mem is mem mem, vav is vav vav, and mem is mem mem. So the nister, the nigla is the mem. The nister is mem mem, the inner, the inner word. The gematria of the nister is the same as the gematria of the nigla. Because the mum on the outside is proof that there's an inside mum. The same thing is true with, a, that's of course a mum that's not born with, but the same thing is true with uh, the fact that mum is a palindrome. It's read backwards and forwards the same. Because it's in and out. That's why it's read backwards and forwards the same way. So says the Pesach, Asher yiyeh by mum. Because people, the Chachmei Chazal, knew that there would be a mum in him. They were able to see the blemish in his soul, and they knew that it would come out in a physical blemish. Now with this, and there answers another interesting question. Years ago, many years ago, at the time that Rabbi Bloom was the executive vice president of the Agudas Yisrael, we invited him to our shul for Shabbos to speak. I have in my shul a lot of Aguda people. Rabbi Shafrin is a member of mine. Rabbi Yoyna Feinstein was a member of mine. So we invited Rabbi Bloom. We had, we had Rabbi Chaim David come and speak, speak by our dinner once. So we invited Rabbi Bloom for a Shabbos and he came and he spoke. I gave a short drasha and then he spoke. And he, it, was, it was in Parshish Emor. And he said an interesting thing. He asked the Kashi, he says, the Welt wonders why the Agudis Yisrael of America make their national convention in fancy hotels. Here the Agudis preaches that people shouldn't be ostentatious, and yet they make their national convention in a five-star Hilton. Sounds hypocritical. He says, why do they do it? So he said... Think about it. A kayin that can't have a mum, that has a mum, can never serve in the Mikdash Hashem. Never serve. He has a sunken nose. He has one foot longer than the other. He can never serve. So he says, you know what the disability board of America would do with such a law? Hashem is showing discrimination in this temple. The Jewish temple discriminates against Handicapped people. It's a big cash. Discrimination. So he says, what's pshat? He said, pshat is, is that this is Hashem's house. Hashem's house has to be perfect. If it's not perfect, people will say, oh, they couldn't get anybody available except for somebody that had a disability that didn't have anything else to do. Hashem's house has to be perfect. That's why you can't use cheap items in the base of English. In a similar way, he said, the Aguda Convention is the stage for the G'dayla Yisrael. And as Kovid Torah demands, it has to be the grandest stage possible. That was his answer to the question. But now we see an entirely different approach. And that is the Kleyoker says the mum that occurs shows an inner blemish. An inner blemish? Like the person that took bribery? That's not allowed in the Mikdash Hashem. Now, again, this points out to the to the Deep insight of Chach Bei Chazal. By the way, the Oitzer Aploys says 
that this is the reason why we're makbid on Shabbos to have chalas or matzahs that are shleimim. Right? Everybody's so careful. No, no, you can't use that chalas. Somebody bit into it already. No, no, by Shabbos, you've got to find two, two bilkalach that are whole. The last day of Pesach, you've got to find whole matzahs. It has to be shleimim. Why does it have to be shleimim? Why does it have to be perfect? Because shulchan daimelim is bare. The table is like an altar. And the food is like a carbon. A carbon can't have a mom. Can't have a blemish. The carbon can't be blemished. The mizbeach has to be whole. That's what he says. I'd like to add a different reason. Another approach to this. Why do we have lechem mishnah on Shabbos? Why do we have two chalas? So we all know that the lechem mishnah is reminiscent of the month. And we have a double portion because on Friday... Hashem gave us a double portion. That's why we have a challah board underneath and a challah cover on top because there was a shikhva satal, a layer of dew under the mud and a, a cover on top of the mud. Right? We have two portions because a miracle happened and Hashem gave on Friday a double portion of mud, one for Friday and one for Shabbos. Ah, what was one of the fascinating features of the mud? <laughs> fascinating feature of the mud was is that everybody got exactly an oimer legulgoilus. Everybody got an oimer. A perfect oimer. Not less, not more. But what's more interesting, I never realized this. The Russia, Dawson and Avira, also got an oimer. It might have fell a mile from their house, and they might have had to take, that's what it says, that... They complained about the mun because the mun revealed if they had a fight with their wife. Because your mun uh, fell three blocks from your house. People saw you get on your sneakers and said, oh boy, there must have been a fight last night. Whoa, must have been a humdinger. Look at them. Look at them trekking out. They had to trek out for their mun. But they got the full oimer. They got the full amount. And therefore, we're makbid that the Lechem Mishnah should be shalling because it was a great, mar- great miracle. If a little piece is missing, that's not the man. Nobody of the millions of people in the Midbar, nobody ever got shortchanged a little bit. And that's the way it is with Parnassa too. And he gives us what we need. We might have to work a lot harder. We might have to walk a lot longer for it. But we always get what we need. And that's why we have a shalim. That's a tremendous lesson. It's a good thing to share by the table with the family. Talk about the wisdom of a rav. That's why everybody has to have a, a rav to go to. tell you a remarkable story this is the first time I'm saying this story it just happened this Friday I would like to get this story to Rabbi Krohn I think it should be written up it's a it's a little self-aggrandizing for me to say it because I'm, I'm the Balamaisa but even so I think it's worth it to say it over you never know what kind of an impact you'll have on a person. About a year ago, it was a year, because it was around Yom HaTzmut, we remember that. About a year ago, Yom HaTzmut is, an, in, is, is, a, uh, is something that uh, in young Israel, Staten Island, they recognize. We don't, we don't recognize any extra date in the calendar, because Ramosha Hold, we don't have the right to add days to the calendar. But other Rabbanim disagreed, and uh, so I happened to know when Yom Ha'atzmut. So it was around Yom Ha'atzmut. Uh, my wife needed, for the basement, for the Tillam group, she needed this, by the, to go down, there's lights all the way high up in the ceiling, and you need a ladder to get the lights there. So we needed somebody to climb up by the steps. It's... it's not easy to do. We need somebody that's not going to hurt themselves to change the lights because the women were going down in the dark. 
So he called this young man who was in construction, who was a friend of the families, we know the parents, if he would mind changing the lights. Of course, what an honor to do for the Rav, for the Rebetzin. Svardim, the Svardim. So they have such covered Arab. So the, the, he came, and not only did he change those lights, but he went around the whole house and any bulb that needed to be changed, all different types of bulbs and special bulbs and bulbs and fans, he ran out to the hardware store, bought all the different bulbs and put them all in. So I hadn't seen him for a while, so I sit down and I talk to him and I ask him, I don't think it's necessary to say the name now, so I'll use a fictitious name. I ask him, uh, um, what's a good Svardi name? Uh, huh? Okay, okay. Let's use BB. Okay? Let's use BB. First name BB. BB. Uh, um, what's doing? So he said, Baruch Hashem. So I said to him, so what, you're in the parasha of Shiduchin? What's doing? So he says, oh, Rabbi Weiss, I'm trying. I'm meeting candidates. So I said to him, so what are you looking for? So he said, Rabbi Weiss, look, I'll tell you the truth. You know, I always tell you the truth. He says, you know, I eat kosher at home. But if I go out to a restaurant, I'm not so careful. That's okay. And he says, Shabbat? Most of the time. Uh, but, you know, if it's inconvenient, then, you know, uh, I'm not so careful. So why lashed into him? I said, and you mean to tell me that's the kind of girl that you want? You want a girl that sometimes kosher, sometimes not, sometimes Shabbat, sometimes not? I said, what do you want, a schizophrenic girl? I said to him, tell me, is that the way you are in business too? Sometimes you're honest, sometimes you're not. Sometimes you do a good job, sometimes you don't. And I said, that's the way you want to raise your children? You tell them, well, sometimes you can eat kosher, sometimes you can have lobster. It depends on the mood. That's what you're going to raise? Are you crazy? I really gave it to him. And then I thanked him for helping me. (laughs) And I wished him well. I didn't see him a whole year till last Friday, last Arab Shabbos. Arab Shabbos, he comes over to the house. He says, Rav Weiss, kisses my hand in the pure Svadi tradition. He says, Rabbi Weiss, can I talk to you? So I said, sure. And people around him privately. So he said, come on in. So he said, Rabbi Weiss, do you remember a year ago I came around your Matzmut and I... I, you talked to me and you yelled at me? I said, yes, you know, because I hardly ever yell at people. He says, Rabbi Weiss, you're such a mild person. I have such respect for you. You yelled at me. It was so out of character. I went home and I took it to heart. He said, I decided for two weeks I'm going to do everything. Keep Shabbat. Eat kosher only. I'll see how it goes. So Rabbi Weiss, I dated between 100 and 150 girls. Nothing went. Nothing went. Said, at the end of the two weeks, I get a call from someone who says, you know, Bibi, I got the perfect girl for you. The perfect girl. She's kind. She's reliable. She's warm. There's only one problem, Bibi. She wants... A Shomer Shabbat B'Tmibut. And she wants somebody to only eat kosher. And I know that's not you. So he says, you know, the funniest thing. But I just started keeping it all. I was only doing it for two weeks, but you called me within the two weeks. It can't be a coincidence. I'll go out with her. They became Chatan and Kala last week. So he came to me and he said to me, Rabbi Weiss, I want you to know, I'm only a chatan because of you. If they would have told me this girl normally, I would have laughed. And this Sunday I went to the vote and I met the parents. Shomet Torah Mitzvot Bemet. 
it's a, it's, a, it's a great story. It's a great story. Excuse me for being a little self-aggrandizing. I don't mean it to be. But it's a great story. See, You see the kayak you could have if you have a raft? And he only came to me a few times. It's a, tr- it's an important thing. So I told him, I want you to be macabre to make sure to have a smarty rav. If they have a rav. So, so let me tell you what it means to have a rav. In this case, the hero of the story was the famous Levush Yisrat. <coughs> great, great rav. And the president of his tzibur, the Parnas HaKahol, had a challenging marriage. And he was a Koyin. Amcha Kemerive Koyin. Sometimes, maybe his wife was a redhead. I don't know if there's any, any truth to that in Irish guy or not. But, but sometimes they had a knockdown fights. And he came to the Rav and said, I can't take it anymore, I want a divorce. Now by a coin, it's no backseas. Once a divorce, there's no hope of putting it back together again. So the president was a good man, but he was an Amoritz. So the Levushe Yisrael told him, look, I'll make a divorce. But is your wife Tame? She Anida? He says, yes, oh, you can't give a divorce because you can't give her a get when she's a nida. So you'll have to come back when she's tar. And every time when she became tar, they have a way of making up with each other when she's tar. And they don't want to get divorced anymore. And this happened like ten times. And each time the Lushay son says, is she tame? Tame? <gasps> can't give a get? Can't, can't give her a get when she's done. Come back when she's done. Levush Yisrael went up to Eretz Yisrael. He relocated to Eretz Yisrael. And another Rav took over. This Rav thought he was God's gift to humanity. And after a while, the president came to him and says, I need a get! So you heard the story? She did that? She did that? Sure, you can get a get. He said, yeah, but... But the Rav said that I can't give her a get when she's tummy. He said, what are you talking about? There's no way to give a get when she's tummy. Sure you can give a get. The Rav doesn't know what he's talking about. And he writes a blistering letter to the Lush Yisrael that who, what kind of a perversion of Allah is that that you can't give a get when a woman is tummy? It says it nowhere that you can't give a get. There's no... Kiva to give a get, Adarabba, they're being marachic one another. There's no problem. Rungi brings a hundred rights that you can give a get when a woman is dumb. So the, so the Levush Yisrael reads the letter in Eretz Yisrael. He turns it over and he writes on the back of it, Loitia Shaita. Don't be an imbecile. Who's smart? Somebody who sees the future. And he sends it back then. So, of course, when the president calmed down, he wanted to remarry his wife. He comes to the Rav and says, I want to remarry her. You can't, you can't, you're a Grusha. He says, So, why didn't you stop me? He became a mortal enemy of the Rav and ended up chasing him out of town. And the end of the story was is that this Rav wrote a tremendous letter of apology to the Levushes Rav. You have to have, you have to realize, a Rav has eyes in his head. That's why people go and they ask advice from laymen, people that don't know anything. During the days of Svira, you really have to work on Kavad You really have to work. The Talmud Rabbi Akiva, 24,000 of them, Died in the death of Ascara, diphtheria. How we have to work on Kavara Av. It's, it's. I don't know why it's, it became story hour over here. It's not the intent, but 
These are all very important lessons. Baruch Atad, you know, Lahina Malachi Lam Shakom Yebidva. Says the Kidashtai is a mitzvah to sanctify the Kayan. He's offering the bread of Hashem, the Karbana, is Kadesh Yelach. We know that we let him take the first portion, let him get the first bracha, right? We're Mekadesh the Kayan. So there was a Maisa with Reb Chaim of Brisk that he came to visit Reb Simcha Zelig of Bezdin, who was already a very old man. And the two of them saw from the window that the Chavetz Chaim was coming. So of course they ran out to greet the Chavetz Chaim. So now all three of them had to go in. So they asked the Chavetz Chaim to go in first. So the Chavetz Chaim says, what, I should go in first? Reb Chaim is the Morad Asri, he should go in first. And after that, Reb Sil Chazel, you're the of best, and you should go in, I should go last. So Reb Sim Chazel says, listen, I got the answer. Well, go in, Koyin Levi Yisrael. Chavetz Chaim is Koyin. Reb Chaim is a Levi, and I'm the Israel. I So the Asicha Nifloi Secha brings down, I'll tell you, fasten your seatbelts. Brings down a similar Misa that happened again with the Austrian Tsar, Franz Josef. There was a famous meeting that the Gedai Israel went to him before Hungary was broken up into different territories. <laughs> So and at that meeting was the Ksav Seifer, the Tzelem Arav, and also at that meeting, besides other G'daylem, was the venerable Rabbi Huda Asad. So when they got to the palace, they had a big discussion who should go in first. So they opened the door to the palace, and in the antechamber was a huge ornate mirror. Now, Rabbi Yehuda Asad had never looked in a mirror in his life. And he opens the door and he sees his reflection. So he said, that man should go in first. Because that man has the shkin up on him. He realized he was talking about himself. This is, this is, this is a written, written up in a lot of places. By the way, this might have happened, if you look in the Art Scroll biography of Rabbi Dessler, Similar mice happened with Rabbi Dessler. Rabbi Dessler never looked in a mirror. Somebody once showed him a picture of himself. And he looked at it and he says, you know, you have to look at this person because this person is an Elohi He never saw himself. So, but that's not why I told you this story. I told you this story because I want to tell you a chilling, a chilling story of Rabbi Yudha Asad. It's a chilling story. Because you have to understand, Kavadat Torah, Kavadat Torah embraces even when somebody doesn't have a bad intent. You have to worry, always worry about Kavadat Torah. It's a fire. It says in, the, in, in Mishnah Pirkei Avos, be careful from Gachalosan, from the coals of Talmud Chacham. Be very careful. What happened was that Rabbi Yudah Asad passed away. He never allowed a picture or painting of himself. But the Talmudim desperately wanted to have a mascaris, a memory of their Rebbe. So after he passed away, before they buried him, they put on his big day Shabbos, and they put him on his chair and took pictures of him. And then they sold the pictures and they made the huge amount of 1,200 florins and they married off Rav Asad's younger daughter because of the first. It's Marish HaKnos's cow. Covered for the rat. And yet it's recorded any person that was involved with this did not live out the year. You don't take a Rebbe after he's dead and, and use him as a prop and dress him up and take off the Tachrichen. You don't do that. 
They did it to marry off his daughter. They did it to have a mascaris of their Rebbe. And the whole world has this picture of Rabbi, the great Rabbi Yudah Asad. Because of this, this picture is circulated all over the place. The picture of Rabbi Yudah Asad. And people, the people in, in benefit from the Hoyuei Necha Reyes is Meirecha. But watch out with Kavad Atayra. Tis the season of Kavad Atayra. Tell you another story about a pshat, about the Enei Ha'eda. I once told this, but I didn't say it as full as I'm going to tell it now. I'm going to add a caveat that I, I didn't know. There was a Maisa in Galicia where a man who was a tenant farmer of the Puritz, who was a tenant farmer, received an order, audit from the Puritz to see if he's you know, giving the Puritz to his correct percentages. And he audited him. And the uh, tenant farmer uh, uh, passed with flying colors. So afterwards, they sat down to drink to toast each other. The Puritz honored him. So the man broke out two beers and they had a lechayim. But he forgot that it was Pesach. Forgot that it was Pesach. So he went to the Shailam Eshev and he asked him, what do I do to atone for this terrible sin, Chametz and Pesach? So the Shailam Eshev said, go to the Belzer Rebbe and ask him, but ask him for his reason." So the Rebbe told him that the penalty for eating chomets b'shoigeg on Pesach is to go in Galus. It's to go into exile. And once you go into exile, sell everything and move to Eretz Israel. So he asked him, how, how does the Rebbe know this? I mean, it's going to change my whole life. I'm going to leave my family, everybody, and give up my business. How does the Rebbe know this? The Bells the Rebbe want me to ask. I mean, the, the Rishon Meishu wanted me to ask. So he says there's two makers. One is from Eicha. It says, Golso Yehudi Me'aini. Yehudi is exiled Me'aini. And Me'aini means because they were guilty of not eating Lechem Aini. Golso Yehudi Me'aini. You didn't eat Lechem Aini, you got to go into exile. It says the other makar is, is, it says only once in the Torah on the word Venichrisa Gershayim. To be chased away. And that's why Kol Oichel Machbet says, the trap, the cantillation is Gershayim, to be chased away. So he brought it to the Shalomashi. So Shalomashi says, there's a second place in this week's parasha. In this week's parasha, it says that if you eat Kachim Betumas Agot, the Nichrisa is written with a Gershayim. So there it means actual chorus. So it doesn't mean that Gullus is also good over here. It's not true. If you eat Kachim Tumazagov, you don't go into Gullus. So he said, go back to the Belzer Rebbe and ask him. So he went back to the Belzer Rebbe and he said, well, my Rav, the Shalom Eish, wants to know what about in Parsha Samo, where it says, with eating Kachim Tumazagov. So the Belzer Rebbe smiled and he says, look at what Rashi says. Look at the Rashi on that Pasuk. Rashi says an unusual thing. It says, mm-hmm. So Rashi says, why does it say, Ani Hashem? He says, Maybe you should go from one town to another. That's enough to go into Gullus. It says, Ani Hashem, I'm everywhere. So curse means you're cut off from this world. He said, there, that's why it says, Ani Hashem, that you shouldn't think that the Gershayim means that Golos is enough. Look at the way Chachmei Yisrael looked at things. It's a whole different way of looking at things. You want to know what it means to be a sage? What it means to be a, one of Chachmei Yisrael? 
One of the great personalities in our history was Rav Eisel Acharif. Ooh. Shmoy Kachu, Rav Eisel Acharif. Rav Eisel the sharp one. So this Maisa happened on Erev Pesach. On Erev Pesach, Rav Eisel Acharif was by Shachris. And of course, Erev Pesach in the morning, everybody is in a crazy rush. You gotta, you gotta burn the chametz. Uh, forget about a rav who has to sell the chametz, but you gotta burn the chametz. You have to finish kashering everything. You gotta get everything away. You, you gotta, and then you gotta start getting the seder ready. <laughs> we know all the things that have to be done. So Rav Nochem, who was a big, big, big ish chesed, comes over to Rav Eisel and he says to him, Shildik Rav, I know this is the last time that you need an emergency, but I have an emergency. He said, Rab Nachum, what is it? What is it? So he says, there's a gvir in town, Rab Nata Hirsch. Oh, everybody knows Rab Nata Hirsch. He says, I have to tell the Rav, terrible news. Rab Nata Hirsch became impoverished. He did a bad deal and he lost everything. He's a Balkoi Vatsa. He has nothing for Pesach, no matzah, no wine. He's embarrassed. Here's a man that helped all the anim in the town. He has nothing. He said, what are you telling me the last minute? I just found out last night. I don't know what to do. He's proud. He hasn't told anybody. I heard he has nothing else. So Rav Eisel said to him, he said to him, listen to me carefully. I want you to go to Rav Nata Hirsch. He's a, he's a big Michael Rabbanim. And tell him the Rav asked for a taiva that tonight after Mariv, he should come and whisper in my ear his blessings. <laughs> so, so, Rav Nachum said to the Rav, I'm Shuldik Rav, but how is that going to help? He said, you just listen to me and everything will be okay. You just tell him that he should come to me after Mariv and whisper in my ear a blessing. So the Reb Nachim goes to Reb Hirsch and he sees he's Bepache Nefesh. He doesn't let him in the house because the house is empty. He beats him outside the house. He says, Reb Nachim, what can I do for you? So he says, I have a message from the Rav. The Rav? What? So the Rav wants you to come after Marv and whisper a blessing in his ear. Blessing in his ear? What does that mean? I should give the Rav, the great Tzaddik, a blessing. He said, look, it says, what do I know? But this is what the Rav was mitzav. The Rav, I, I, I don't understand. He tells his wife, I don't know what's going on. I don't, I don't know, but okay, you've got to listen to the Rav. So after Mariv, everybody goes to give good yantif to the Rav. And Rav Eisel Acharif goes over to the Rav and whispers in his ear, the more the asses of the bench sign, the call me shall he say in the taiva. The Rav says, Ah, I can't believe it. Everything is comments. Everything is answer. The whole house is comments. But don't worry. You're not in the Nira Nidachas. You don't have to worry. You don't, don't worry. You're not, you're not in any ready dachas. There's plenty of people here that are going to take care of you. Taganish. And in a few minutes, this one offers the soup, and this one offers the wine, and this one offers the matzah. That's Chachma Yisrael. Oh, they just messed up my CD. They just killed my CD. They just killed my CD. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. Rats and Hashem. That's an issue. Hope, I hope they didn't kill the, the video too. Huh? 
Maybe. Yeah. No, this isn't backed up, but I have a tape. I'll have to take it off the tape. Ah, he makes the night an hour later. Um, Svartem lochem imokra asa Shabbos. And you should count Mimachras Hashab. So in Shulchan Aruch it says that we know during the Yemei Svira, Noigen Shloy Lisa Isha, Bain Pesach Latzeris, between Pesach and Shwas, Ad Lag Baimer, Mibnesha Oisa's man, Mesu Tamidu Rabbi Kiva. We know the great tragedy of 24,000 Tamidu Rabbi Kiva died. I mean, it's an unparalleled tragedy. 24,000. You know, we have now in Lakewood, Kanai and her, thousands of thousands of B'nai Torah, in Mir, in Ponevish. But I don't know if we have 24,000 Talmidim. Imagine Rachman on all of the Yeshiva like die. And from the most horrible death, the Maran Bracha says, the fury is the most horrible death. Only them. Vailam Shomei. So Rabbi Cheskel Abramsky asks a very powerful set of questions. The first question he says is, we all know the Medrash, that Moshe Rabbeinu was shown that Rabbi Akiva would dash in tile tilem shel halachas, mounds and mounds of halachas from every crown in the Torah. So Rabbi Cheskel Abramsky says, if there's so many lessons from every crown, how come none of it is recorded? Not, not, nothing is recorded in, in Shas. Shas is 2,711 blot. It should be six, 7,000 blot to have all the laws from all the crowns. Why isn't anything there? That's the first question. The second question, which he says is a pella, is I don't understand. I can't figure it out. Why do we mourn so many thousands of years later the death of the, the Talmud Rabbi Kiva? We mourn for 12 months. There's no, there's, there's even the Mishpat Gehenim for Risham is only 12 months. What are we mourning for so many years later? We don't do that. We don't mourn for so many years later for people. So he answered that the reason why we don't have the lesson from the crowns is because those lessons Rabbi Kiva taught to his 24,000 Talmidim. And everyone died, and they died with them. We don't have it. Obviously, Rabbi Kiva didn't have the time to teach it to Rameyer and the seven Chachamim in the Dharam. He had to teach them all Taira. Don't forget, he learned with the Talmud Rabbi Kiva 24 years. We're not mourning the people. We're mourning the Torah. That's a mourning that goes on for thousands of years. All that Torah laws? What a shas we would have! Turns out that the mourning of Svira is a mourning of a lost Torah. And of course, the way to recover that is to learn Torah. And that's why there's such an emphasis on COVID at time. Talking about COVID at time, it's interesting. It's an interesting shadow. What happens if a Rav forgets to count sphere? How does a Rav forgets to count sphere? So if he forgot to count sphere, he, he, he visited somebody in the hospital, he was there late in the night. He forgot to count three. So is he to be embarrassed in front of his kill or the rest of the time and not count Svira? It's an interesting. The child is brought down to the river of Ephraim, Ramosha's Tal- Talmud, in Chelek Ches. And he said that one of the Ga'ine Velozhin forgot to count Svira one night. And what he did was, is he asked somebody in his Kehila not to count, and he was mighty him. That's how he counted. 
there's a big shyly if you could do that. Because you could only be mighty someone if you have a chiv. But since he doesn't have a chiv, could he be mighty? Now that's not so posh because he has a chiv, just he can't do it. It's not that he doesn't have a chiv. That's what the river of Ephraim says. Lemaise is the Shevet Alevi in Chela Gimel says that uh, the manager of his city forgot to count and he asked him what to do and he said for Kavad HaTayra he could rely on the Rishonim and Simon Tafetes that each night is a mitzvah of Neatzma and he could count. And that's the Psak of the Kamar Nerebbe and the Psak of the Divrei Chaim from Sanz. Kavad HaTayra is not a small thing. It's interesting that the base are Levi Paskins, that if somebody forgets, they could count, because there's a separate mitzvah to count weeks. And since there's a separate mitzvah to count weeks, unless he forgot a whole week, he can make the bracha because of the week. Shilif, the base of Levi, means that he could only count on 721 and 714, 21 and 28, or he could count every day. That's a Shilif. We well, see the element of Kabbat HaTayra. As always, we'd like to thank you I'm sorry that there won't be a CD tonight now that the CD was killed. It, it doesn't mean that it's anybody's fault. It could have been a blackout. If somebody was fooling around with the lights, that's, that's a big shud. Uh, but of course, they didn't realize what they were doing even so. Uh, we want to thank you for joining us. Marv will be at 11.30. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.